how can the market be so disconnected with economic reality? Okay, great question. First of all, the market is never connected with reality. Let's get some certain things straight. It never has been and it's not designed to be connected to reality. A lot of people go wrong with this. They're, they're trading based on their expectation that the market is supposed to reflect reality. When we know off the bat that the market is a discounting mechanism, which means what? The market is forward thinking. It is thinking 6 to 12 months down the line. So this is why companies trade at a premium, right? Why would a company trade at 15 times their current reality now? Why? That's a P-E ratio of 15 means that its price-to-earnings ratio is 15 times bigger. It's trading 15 times more than what it's making now, its current reality now. So isn't the fact that most companies that trade on based on a premium, a P-E ratio means that you're trading at a premium to your reality now, okay? Tesla is trading at, like, um, it depends on what number you pick, but it's trading at a 900 times its reality now, 900 times its current reality. Think about that. So is that reality? The very fact that we have P.E. ratios is a clear indication that the market does not trade based on reality. It is disconnected with the current reality. It's designed to be forward thinking in its nature. So you so that's one thing to understand. Forget about this. I'm going to trade based on my real experience today or, or the real experiences that I see the world experiencing today. That's what the market should be reacting on wrong. You don't understand how markets are designed. They're designed to think eight months from now. So people aren't betting based on today. The only time markets start trading the now is if they get hit blindsided by a devastating blow. That's when the market starts out of fear reacting on the now. Do you understand this? You did not know this. That's why we have these talks. And that's those are great questions. I don't want you to I don't want you to I don't want you to come off with my answer, I don't want you to interpret that as me feeling like you should know this. And I'm sorry if I'm coming off that way. That is not how I want to come off. What I want to come off is that's an amazing question. It tells me that you're thinking the right way. We just have to make some adjustments. That's why we have these talks. And you're, you're not the only one who's going to be thinking or thinking the, that way, you know? So, we don't have, we have a forward thinking market and the industry term is it's a discount. The market is a discounting mechanism. All right. It thinks forward. Now, there's something else connected to that question as well, traders. You see, I want you to understand that the world of the market is the world of the elite. The market is not the world of the regular individual, the regular business. Now, let's think of citizens of the world, okay? We have citizens of the world on many different levels. We've got the super elite citizens of the world. We've got the very poor citizens of the world. And we have basically different layers in between those two extremes, yes? Okay. I want you to include businesses as citizens. Don't think that businesses are apart from citizens. In the U.S. tax code, a business is a living, breathing entity with its own social security number, its own governmental number. It's called the employee identification number, right? That's a social security number. It's a person. 
It needs a tax return like you need a tax return, right? It has a birth date like you have a birth date. And if you ever close that business, it has a, a, a death like you have a death. So businesses must be looked at as citizens too. Now, the stock market is the home of the elite citizens in the business world. They are not the regular people that fall in between. They're not the poor citizens of the business world either. So the stock market does not reflect the vast majority of the business world. The vast majority of the business world are poor businesses, businesses that basically live week to week, that basically eck out enough to kind of have the, the owners, their family, they can put food on the table, but they don't live an amazing lifestyle. That's like 90% of the businesses in the world. They just help the owners survive. The stock market doesn't reflect them. Okay, then we go a step further. We go to the guy who has a great restaurant in town, great reputation, four and a half stars. A lot of the community goes there. This guy lives well. He's been there for 14 years. He's become a staple in the community. You know, drives a nice car. His kids go to private school. The, the, owner's, the, the, the owner is a pillar in the society. He might have a little, little, he might even have a little membership at the country club, play golf on Sunday mornings with his buddies, and they take their two vacations a year. They live decently off of this restaurant. You understand? The stock market doesn't reflect that either. You understand? So... Think about the fact that the stock market is not reflecting 98% of all the businesses in the world right now who are hurt, who are struggling for survival, and who are unfairly being targeted by this pandemic and policies instituted by their governments. Think about this. Small businesses are forced to close when the Big businesses of the stock market are not forced to close. No one forced a Walmart to close. No one forced a Target to close, a Home Depot to close, a Starbucks to close. But if you have a little restaurant, you got to close. If you've got a little clothing shop, you got to close. So 98% of the businesses have been targeted unfairly while the elite businesses, the ones that the stock market focuses on, that 2% that the stock market focuses on, gets to gobble up all the business that used to go spread out a little bit through all the other 95% of the businesses that were open, right? So now when you shut those down, when you shut 98% of the smaller businesses that are not reflected by the market that had a little piece of the economy, when you force them to shut, everything goes to that elite 2%. And so this is why the wealth of this world, billionaires have increased their wealth by something like $600 billion during the pandemic. All that business from shutting down the world came to them. They were the only ones allowed to stay open. And so you have a market that does not look at the world, the 98% of the world that's hurt. You have a market that only looks at the 2% that wasn't freaking hurt. No wonder it's going up. Do you understand what I'm saying, traders? Does this make sense? Are you putting the pieces together now? You have to understand what the stock market focuses on. It's an elitist game. It's only in the last freaking few years that you have been able to join the game. I'm very, I'm very proud to say I've been very influential in that. Since the 1990s, my message has been bringing Wall Street to Main Street, 
to breaking this thing wide open so that every regular person has a chance to participate in what's not been built for the regular people, right? And that's just because I was regular. I just slipped through one of the cracks in the system. <laughs> but so when you see, when you see, guys, when you understand it this way, you understand that the market is focused on the right thing. It is focused on itself. The market knows I'm an elitist. I don't focus on the little businesses that are hurt. I focus on the Amazons. You understand? I focus on those multi-billion dollar international conglomerates. Think of what the S&P 500 just did. They tried to ignore him, Elon Musk. They tried to poo-poo him. But the power of his, the, the, the stock Tesla has just forced them to have to, have to acquiesce, right? So they are now starting J December 1st. When is that, Monday? No, Tuesday. Tuesday. Tesla will be in the S&P 500, right? Now, what effect do you think that that is going to have on the S&P 500? It's going to have a bullish effect because just by virtue of Tesla being included December 1st in the S&P, all of the ETFs that have to buy it because the ETF's existence was created to mimic the S&P 500, they have to buy it. They have to. By law, they have to buy it. Your ETF tracks the S&P 500. So you must buy whatever gets put into the S&P 500. And so it's these types of things that will keep this picture of everything being good going on when we know that's only 2% of the story. But don't ever think, traders, for a moment that the elitist market that we play is going to reflect the reality we see in our daily lives. It will never reflect that. And do you know how many people out there, uneducated and untrained, get decimated and get disappointed and get frustrated and say that the whole game is rigged, but just because they don't understand. It's, if it were as easy as walking out of your door and saying the market should react to what I see in the world, if it were that easy, we'd all be billionaires. It's not that easy. <laughs> you know? But this has been one of the greatest wealth transfers in the history of the world. Listen to me, traders. This pandemic has been one of the greatest heists, one of the greatest financial heists in financial history. It will go down as that. Oh, yes, in the history books greatest amount of wealth switch to the 2%. We've got food lines in America. Can you believe this? In America, where people have to show up to get a freaking free bag of food 24 hours before. They have to live in their car an entire day to grab one bag of free food. That's the United States today, and you've got the market hitting all-time new highs. You've got people who haven't paid rent in six months. You've got a real estate, a commercial real estate market that is on the verge of collapse. 
You have a bankruptcy rate that's the highest it's ever been since the 1930s. You got unemployment through the roof and growing. You got a hospital system that is near collapse. You've got people that are hungry, that do not know what they're going to do next month. That's here in America. And the stock market is hitting all-time new highs. It's not that it's disconnected with reality. That that I just explained is not its reality. Right? So we got to know which kind of what worlds we're playing with, you know. 